Hello, my name is Alex Eagle. I work on the Angular team at Google. And I'm excited about our latest release of Angular 2 Developer Preview, where you can get started from scratch. You no longer need to fetch a repository with some special pre-prepared bits in it. So that means Angular 2 is a little bit more real. And if you haven't already started learning, this might be a good time to start. If you have not looked at our quick start, it's now updated on angular.io, and it shows how to get started from an empty project directory. We'd like to get a little bit more in-depth than that. So I'm going to show a different demo. Uh, you can find it here in this GitHub repository. This is the same demo that Anders Heilsberg did at the Build conference last week. Um, and it's been handed back and forth between the Angular and TypeScript teams as we do demos and conferences. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to put this app together from scratch. I'm going to do that using Visual Studio Code, which is the new editor that was announced at the Build conference. It's from Microsoft, uh, but it's, it's, it's very open source based. So this is not the same code base as Visual Studio. It starts off with the, the same shell that uh, the Atom editor uses, and inside it's just a web kit. And in fact, the, the insides are written using TypeScript. So you're actually using a web-based editor inside of this, this, this WebKit shell. Uh, and it works really well for TypeScript. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new empty directory called to-do. And the first thing we want to do is fetch the Angular 2 type definitions. So that will light up the editor and the compiler to do type checking and also help us out. Um, in the quick start, we just fetched a single file, but the more realistic way to do this to share with your team is to use TSD and create a JSON file. And this file will be checked into our repository so other people on the team will be up to date with the right type definitions. And if I look for Angular 2, I see that it's published, and so I can just install that and also update my JSON file so that other people on my team will get this new dependency. And if I look in the tsd.json file now, I see a particular SHA of Angular 2 is here. This is a good idea because you want to, you want to lock down your dependencies during development time and update them intentionally and not just have your continuous build go from green to red because of some change outside of your, outside of your repository. So this keeps our repository hermetic we can also see that uh, what the TSD program has done. We have a typings directory created, and in here we have Angular 2. Um, note that, that uh, this, is, this is not the complete type definitions for Angular 2. We're still working on that. We're not going to call Angular 2 beta until things like this are finished. Next, we need to configure the TypeScript compiler. So in the demo, in the quick start, we told you to just run a command line uh, that had some options in it, but that's hard to share with tools like the IDE, and it's hard to share with other developers on your team. So instead we can use the tsconfig.json file, which is new in TypeScript 1.5, and it spells out all of our options. I'm going to copy one, and then start Visual Studio Code. Let me show you what's in that file I just copied, so there's no magic. Um, so we're telling it we're going to have a todo.ts file and an angular2.d.ts file that it should watch for changes. And then the compiler options we're going to pass says that we need to emit decorator metadata. This is a, a, a flag specifically for the annotations that we're going to use. Uh, and that we need to tell it what module system and what, uh, what language we want it to output. So now that we have this in place, we can create todo.ts. And we can also... start the TypeScript compiler in watch mode. I'm going to leave this terminal running in the background, and it's going to run compilation for us and produce the JS file next to this TypeScript file. OK. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in the typings we downloaded. And now I should be able to import from all of the namespaces declared in that file. OK, so we're bootstrap, we're going to need this. Note that the documentation shows up here in the completion pop-up. 
component view four. We're also going to use Firebase in this demo. Firebase is still not released um, for Angular 2, so I'm going to have to copy that over as well. Great. Now I'm going to grab a couple more import statements. And nothing is read. So that means this is working. Now all of these types should resolve for us and we'll have completion and type checking. So we use classes to define all the stuff that Angular 2 is going to use. We're going to call this the to-do app. We need to add some annotations onto this class to tell Angular that this is supposed to be a component. So we put add component. We also are going to want to have a view associated with this component so that it can present some UI. And the compiler is telling us Supplied parameters do not match any signature of call target. That's because we didn't give any parameters here, and this method takes one parameter, which is a component arg. That's an object that has properties like selector. Here again, you see completion is working. Sorry, this is a JavaScript object. And inside of view, we also need a, an argument. This is an object and it has a template URL property. Again, completion is working. We're going to call this todo.html. The last thing we have to do is bootstrap to tell Angular about our class. So now we have just enough. If we look in the JavaScript file, it's generated a whole bunch of stuff. Let's start up another little window and start up an HTTP server. So we don't have any HTML files yet. And let's take a quick look at it. We have some styles in line. And importantly, we're grabbing Angular 2 now from an official location rather than having it bundled with our app. Firebase, unfortunately, is still bundled. We also need an in, a todo.html, which is the template that this to-do app component will use to render its UI. I'll copy that over also. And let's look at that. I'm not really going to go through this in any detail. If you don't, if you haven't yet seen syntax like event handlers, or property binding, there's a different talk for you. Right now, I'm just trying to show the tooling and how to get set up. So now the app loads. Does it do anything? No, it doesn't have any behavior. So it's time to fill in more of the component logic. First thing we need to do is configure the dependency injection. We're going to add an injectable section to our component annotation. This tells it how to inject an Angular Fire and a Firebase if it's asked. And then we do want to ask for those with this constructor. The constructor asks for an Angular Fire instance from the dependency injector. And I'm going to copy all this implementation also. Notice that the implementation in here is not idiomatic TypeScript. This is just JavaScript code that's been copied over from an earlier demo. No types are required in here. It's really amazing that TypeScript does the right thing by allowing you to gradually improve the typing in your application. And in general, 
migrating to TypeScript is just as gradual as you'd like it to be. As your app becomes more mature, you'll probably find yourself adding more strict checks, more typing, um, and, uh, and you can do that as you go. And the last thing we need is to declare what directives we're, we plan to use inside of our template. This allows Angular to do some very clever static analysis. And now the app is working. So what I've shown here is how to start from scratch and create a more interesting Angular 2 application using some excellent tooling and in a way that you could actually commit to a repository and share with coworkers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy using Angular 2.